What's up, YouTube? And what you know, my name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to the final part of my tier list of the Kanto Gym Leaders. In the last two videos, over the last couple weeks, we've gone over the low and mid tier Gym Leaders, trainers 10 through 3. If you've missed those videos, make sure you check them out. The links will be in the description, or you can click on the cards at the top right of the screen. In this video, we're going to be covering the last two Gym Leaders. You already know who they are, so let's talk about their order. At number two and kicking off our top tiers is Sabrina, the Saffron City Gym Leader. As a kid, it was seen that she had psychic powers when she accidentally bent a spoon. She communicates with all of her Pokemon telepathically and she was a total jerk, which was pretty cool. Speaking about her design, she just looks like she's not about to mess around. She looks like she's there for business. Her history, personality, design get her a very solid eight. Her gym design is unique and in my opinion might be the best thing about her. I really like this gym puzzle. There's a very easy way to get to Sabrina and to battle everyone along the way if you're trying to defeat all the trainers. All you have to do is run a straight line across from each teleport. There's also a quicker way to only use four teleports to make it to her. I think this gym takes Koga's gym design and furthers it in a good way. So Sabrina's gym design gets a 9, a very solid score. The gym difficulty is up there as well. Psychic was pretty broken in first gen, making the gym pretty hard. Alakazam's stats, especially his special stat, are a big factor in this gym. The gym has the same level as Koga's gym, so if you've already taken out Sylphco, you should be able to manage getting through the gym. That being said, the rest of the difficulty still results in this gym getting an 8. In the anime, Sabrina was the first trainer to absolutely destroy Ash, resulting in a forfeit. Lieutenant Surge knocked out Pikachu, but then Ash came back in the next episode and it was just, you know, it was just normal. They just went on about life because Ash won. After she won, she kidnaps everyone except Ash in the anime just and turns them into dolls, which is crazy. Ash returns a couple episodes later with Haunter with hopes of defeating Sabrina, but Haunter runs away. Ash goes to search for him, finds him, and convince, finally convinces him to help. Haunter comes and Sabrina is finally quote unquote beaten by Haunter making funny faces at her and making her laugh. So her anime self would get a 10, except the way that she was ended, so she's going to get an 8 on that. Sabrina has so much depth and power to her. Psychic was broken in Gen 1, the teleports were unique to her gym, and Sylphco of course, and she was the first gym leader to destroy Ash to where he had to recruit a new Pokemon to quote unquote win. So her total score is an 8.2, which is miles ahead of number 3. At the top of the tier list, you all know who it is, it is Blaine, the Cinnabar Island gym leader. Look at how cool he is, he has all the swag. He's actually not a crazy creepy old guy like most old guys in the game are. He has the most swag. He was inspired to train fire type Pokemon by a Moltres that helped him out of a frozen mountain range. After the volcano on Cinnabar Island erupted, Blaine's home and gym were destroyed. He takes disaster and comes out better than before, moving out to the Seafoam Islands and rebuilding. We should all live to be like Blaine. His personality, design, and history give him a super solid 9. His gym design is quite unique and wasn't replicated again until Lenora's gym in the 5th generation. You have to go through the Pokemon Mansion to get a key to enter his gym. Pokemon Mansion has way too many encounters and is extremely annoying to get the key. I really like the idea of a quiz during the gym, testing your knowledge. In gold and silver, his gym gets burnt down, so he just gives up and leaves, right? No! He relocates to Seafoam Islands and continues to whoop butt. In hard gold and soul silver, he has completely redesigned the gym out there with new trainers and everything to get to him. His gym design is my favorite of the generation and gets a 10. Gym difficulty is a slightly different story. By this point, a fire type gym should be really easy to take on. The levels are pretty high though, especially in yellow with an ace of 54. Fire Blast on Arcanine could be a lot of trouble if it hits through its low accuracy. So his gym design, or his gym difficulty, just gets a 6. 
In the anime, he starts out as a Riddler, who then turns out to be gym leader Blank. After his first couple Pokemon get janked out, like his Rhydon losing to Pikachu's electric attacks, he summons Magmar out of the volcano and nearly ends Pikachu's life. He then has the best Kanto anime battle with Charizard, barely losing in the end. So Blaine's anime personality gets another solid 10. Blaine is ridiculously cool and strong. He's not a flat personality like we've seen on this list many times. Not to mention his gym design and anime renditions are near perfect. What more can be said, Blaine gets an 8.6 total score which is comfortably above Sabrina and is, in my opinion, the best gym leader in Kanto. That is it! Now you've seen my tier list for the Kanto Gym Leaders. I want to know what you think. In the comments below, let me know if you agree, disagree, or why you think someone should be elsewhere on the list. As I said many times, I wound up talking about these trainers a lot more than I initially intended, so there will definitely be some changes for the next list like this. If you've watched all three videos, thank you so much, and I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. More videos like this will be coming very soon. Have a blessed day.